series I'm about to start is called Minding My Business. Minding My Business. And for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about how to mind our business and develop and be all that God wants us to be. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time in the Word. Let your anointing, let your favor just rest on it. And God, open our minds to understanding what you're speaking to us in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to think about something. Wouldn't it be great if people would just mind their own business? Wouldn't it be great if everybody did what he or she was supposed to do? And wouldn't it be great if the world wasn't full of nosy, trifling, can't stop, won't stop, getting on other people's nerves and business? If people just focused on what God said do, but it's not that simple. People are overly concerned with how much money this person makes, who's going where, who's doing what, what do they got on, do they have any business having that on, all these kind of things. But today, I'm going to teach you how to mind your own business because apparently it's not, it's an acquired skill. It's not anything that happens naturally. And you're going to see in a minute why it's important for us to mind our own business. I'm going to give you a couple quotes that I read that I love. Ann Landers says, make someone happy today. Mind your own business. I thank God that Jesus minded his business and because he did, I'm happy. I thank God that Kohan minded their business and because they did, my feet are happy. Eleanor Roosevelt said, great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Small minds discuss people. Here's the main idea of my uh, sermon today. Your business will never be what it's supposed to be until you start minding it. Your business will never be what it's supposed to be until you start minding it. Staying out of others' business and minding your own will grow your business. I'm going to give you a scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 9. Paul, and they, they were speaking to the people there at Thessalonica, and he said, But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, uh, so towards all the brethren of Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more. He's, here's how to increase that you also aspire to lead a quiet life. Some translations say study to lead a quiet life. To mind your own business, Paul said it, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. So let's talk about aspiring to lead a quiet life. Well, first let me tell you why Paul wrote this. In, first, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 11, you can see a little bit about the culture uh, that was going on there. This, this was a culture of busybodies. Uh, they weren't working at all. They were in each other's business, and it was just causing all kind of turmoil and things. And Paul had to address the uh, culture that they existed in. So the word aspire means to have ambition. Uh, it's translated in several ways, versions of the Bible, as, as quiet, uh, of how to be quiet. And we got to aspire to be quiet in our lives, to rest in what God says is ours. That word quiet is a word that alludes to peace, calm, rest, satisfaction. I don't know about you, but I aspire uh, to have peace in my life. I want to study, have ambition to live a quiet life, a life of peace. I want financial peace. I want relationship peace. I want mental peace. I want career peace. I want internal peace. I want the opposite of drama. I want peace. I want everybody listening to me today who wants to live like this, just say no more drama. I need you to type that in the comment section. Now, here's the reality if you want don't want any more drama. You can't be causing the drama that you're fussing about. You got to find a way to live a life of peace. Study, aspire to be quiet. This quiet has nothing to do with volume, but everything to do with the quieting of the noise in your life. This, gen this generation, we know full well what quiet means with no noise. There is this thing that puts smoke in the air that this generation is very familiar with. Weed, dope, marijuana, what you want to call it, the good stuff, they call it loud. It is loud and it has no noise. So you know what I'm talking about when I mean live a quiet life, meaning that it doesn't have noise, but it's effective. This word quiet means move in silence. You don't have to be flashy and flamboyant in everything you do. Let your success speak for you. This word quiet means resting in God and his promises. I don't have to compare or compete with anybody around me. I want you to be quiet in your relationships. Don't be shady. 
Be solid. Be stable. Admit when you're wrong. None of us are perfect. We don't get things right all the time, but at least be solid. Own up to where you are. Be stable in what you do. Another way of being quiet is the way you address drama. You address it in a quiet way that it doesn't spill over to social media. It doesn't have to spill over to the streets. It doesn't have to spill over to places that it has no business spilling into. There are people who are watching me right now, and you are married, perhaps are dating. When you are having things that need to be resolved, it don't have to spill over. You ain't got to go in Kroger and argue on our seven. You don't have to show out at your children's ball games. You don't have to show out in church. There is a way to deal with things, can I get a witness here, in a quiet manner. That word quiet also means confidential. Some stuff ain't a secret. It just ain't nobody else's business. And when you're quiet, you understand how to keep things where they are. I don't know about you, but if you tell me something, I don't want to hear my business in the streets. I don't want to hear somebody else coming to ask me about business that I told you. When you are studying to be quiet and you don't want drama, you learn how to keep things where they should be. It says study to be quiet, minding my own business. Declare that in the uh, comment section here. I need you to say, I'm going to mind my own business. Let me just start by describing what minding my business does not look like. It doesn't mean I am selfish where I don't care about anybody else. You could be on the side of the road on fire and I ain't worried about you. I'm just driving straight forward. doesn't mean I'm selfish. I don't worry about what's not, uh, I'm not concerned about what's going on in anybody else's life. Or I'm just tunnel focused on my stuff. No, it doesn't mean I don't neglect to help others. Here's what minding my business looks like. It's the opposite of, uh, well, let me, before I get there, can I tell you uh, just why Jason Scales believes that a lot of people don't mind their business? Proverbs 20 and 3 says, it's an honor for a man to cease for strife. Notice it's an honor. But he said, every fool will be meddling. I think people are in other people's business because they're foolish. I think people are nosy. When I lived in the great city of Philadelphia, um, my, the guy who lived in the apartment next to me, he was a, a charmer, whatever you want to call it, and he had plenty of lady friends. One night about 3 in the morning, I heard a window break out, and I heard some screaming and cussing. And, you know, I like to be nosy. I was looking at my window, and I saw her, and she had a gun in her hand. And she broke his window out and was screaming at him and the lady that was in the room with him. And then he said, I'm going to call the police. And she had the nerve to try to hide behind a bush. And I'm thinking, lady, you know we can see you. And she saw me looking out the window, and she said, you can get some too. I knew at that moment I needed to mind my own business. When you are in other people's business, you will get in harm's way of stuff that was never intended for you. You will find yourself involved in drama and things that you have no business being in. And here's the thing about it. We are drawn towards drama whether you like it or not. Jason Scales included. Look at some of the shows we watch. Look at some of the things that we are drawn to. Watch this. You can spend, you can say, I'm going to look at TikTok real quick. And five minutes can turn into 30 minutes. Try to read a book. You will get distracted and what's supposed to be 30 minutes will be five because you'll find your mind somewhere else. I think intrinsically we can find ourselves being nosy. I think with people, many people in other people's business because we're judgmental. We can be judgmental. We can be messy, we can be petty, and we can be controlling know-it-alls and don't even realize it. Here's what I found out in my life and other people's life. When you are judgmental, it is normally because there's some stuff in our own life that we need to be judging, but it's easy to look at somebody else's uh, life and judge them. I think people are uh, in other people's business because we don't understand boundaries. Boundaries is this, what's your business, what's mine? What's none of my business, and what should I be involved in? And I think people can take clues. Have you ever had somebody who was in your business a little too far, uh, giving you advice that you did not ask for, giving you counsel that you never, they never stopped to ask, I don't know if it's any of my business, but can I say this? They just start giving you their opinion, and you sitting here, uh, your, your shoulder twitching, your eyebrow won't stay still, wishing they would shut up, and you're trying to be nice. I think people don't understand their boundaries, and when they don't, they find themselves in somebody else's business. Can I save you some time and some argument? Before you get ready to talk, you should ask yourself this question. What does this matter to me? Do have the authority to ask this or say this. I think we should all study our boundaries. So what does it mean to mind out? You still out there with me? What does it mean to mind my own business? It means I know what my business is. 
Jesus said, I'm about my father's business. It's knowing my boundaries and catching clues when I'm violating boundaries. It's knowing what my job is versus what God's job is. The reason why many of us are so stressed and trying to figure some stuff out in life is because we're trying to do God's job and we want him to do ours. Our job is to live by faith. His job is to give us the grace to access whatever we need in the moment. Can I ask you a question? Are you trying to be God and want him to do what you're supposed to be doing? It's discovering why you're here on this earth, minding your business. Where do I fit in? There's nothing worse than a person who doesn't know how to fit in a situation. And people who don't know how to, y'all shoot me later on or just shout me down later on. But there's nothing worse than a person who doesn't know how to fit that blames the situation because they don't know how to fit in. People are arrogant. They, they think they too much of themselves. Just be honest and say, I don't know how to click. I don't know how to fit in this moment. Instead of putting it on somebody else, at some point, you got to look yourself in the mirror. Minding your business means I solve problems versus creating them. As a formula I live by, he who solves problems gets paid. And he who creates problems eventually gets fired. Jesus removed obstacles. He didn't have an obstacle pointing out ministry. And I think in the church, we ought to be very careful because many of us, all we do is point out what's wrong with stuff. And the thing is, if you identify something that's wrong, solve it so you can move into what's right. Minding my business means I genuinely care for people. I want to help others, but I can't help you if I'm not in a position to help you. It's digging into what I'm supposed to be doing and discovering what is my responsibility? How can I do more effectively what it is that God has called me to do? You know what else uh, minding your business is? It's giving counsel versus being nosy. Here's the truth. There are some situations that you see that you really have an honest concern and want to share your advice or share your opinion, opinion in those situations. In those situations, minding your business is saying this, hey, would you mind if I share something with you? Or instead of saying this is getting on my nerves, let me help you, ask that person, what are you trying to accomplish? What what do you see yourself? What do you see yourself going? And when they tell you, say, hey, if you want to accomplish that, have you thought about this? Now interject. That's not violating a boundary. That's not being nosy. That's helping them to accomplish what they want to do. And can I tell you the truth? Most of us, including myself, don't even realize this. We don't do stuff unless it's our own idea. And it's a way of selling somebody an idea like it's theirs. And you sitting here like, I gave you that the whole time. It don't even matter. The only thing that matters is that it gets done. Minding your business is a full-time job. This is why I pray for people. I help people. I try my best to stay out of people's way because I got my own challenges. I don't know about you. You're probably perfect. You got life uh, figured out. You got life solved. But I got my own struggles. I have my own assignment. And it's enough for me to figure out how can I do what God's called me to do. And here's what I found out as well. There's a whole lot of people that get towed up when people decide they're going to step out and do stuff person want to start a business. They want to start a church. They want to move another job and do whatever. Listen, you do what God's called you to do because here's what I found out. Life has its own reality check because when you get through trying to impress people and worried about they should be doing that or not, life has a way of punching you in the mouth. Life has a way of you got to pay those bills through faith. You got to handle that responsibility by faith. People say stuff like they shouldn't have kids this young. They shouldn't do that. Listen, I let people be and follow the path that God wants them to follow because here's what I found out. I got to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling, and all of us have to live out our dreams, and it's best that we pray for each other. And you know what I love about God? That even if I'm in the wrong place, God never puts somebody in my right place. He always leaves the place for me that I should be so that there's grace abounding so that I can do what God's called me to do. And I don't mean to preach this, but can I tell you what else happens? God's blessing on your life has nothing to do with what people think about you. When God gets ready to bless you, he doesn't consult anybody else. When God called you, he didn't ask anybody else, can they do this? Can they do that? No. God said, I'm going to mind my own business, and I'm going to create them to be what I called them to be. So I say, go after what God has called you to. Get help along the way. And if it's the wrong place, watch this. God has the right place available. Minding my business does this. It keeps me out of yours, and it allows me to help others. Several years ago, I went to a church conference that changed my life. Um, we were very young, probably about three to four years old in this ministry. We went to Church of Highlands, Pastor Chris Hodges, there in Birmingham, Alabama. 
and they were just, we paid a fee to get in. They didn't take up any offerings. There were not like special offering lines after he preached. I was like, we're not offering. I was waiting for this stuff. They were giving stuff away, just giving stuff away. They were telling you how much to pay for likes. They were telling you. They say, hey, here's our graphics. Here's our resources. Here's our videos. I'm like, why are they giving stuff away? He said something. He said, the more we give, the more God gives back. And God gave it to us. We minded our business so that we can help others grow theirs. When you mind your business, God puts you in a position to give it away and to help others. But we're so busy. Now, now copyright your stuff. Get your, now, now, we can't put our name on that stuff. It was copywritten. We can't violate and say we came up with this. But they helped us to do what God called us to do. Copyright your stuff. Get it in the Library of Congress. All those things like that. Don't nobody steal your profit and all that stuff. But do not be afraid to help somebody else. You ever see somebody have this poverty mentality and you go ask them, and how do you do this? I ain't sharing my stuff with nobody. Here's the reality is when God has blessed you, I got a great organist behind me, and I pray that he gives all his keys away, all his, not keyboards, but not how, how he learned and do all these things. Watch this. Because as he gives, he creates capacity for God to give him more. As you give and mind your business, God grows your business because he says, that's a person that I can trust. He said, live a quiet life minding your own business. Then this is what he said. Work with your own hands. Minding my business is more than staying out of yours. Because there's a whole lot of folks that stay out of the way. But here's the reality. Minding your business is not just staying out of yours. It's growing mine. I got to grow the business that God has given me by becoming good at what I do, becoming skilled at what I do, and developing the thing that God has placed at my hand to do. Somebody type in the comment section and say, I'm going to mind my business. And I want your business to grow. Work is God's plan. There's a difference between working and having a job. But the concept of work to produce results is God's plan. We can fall into Satan's trap and just think God's going to do anything and I'm going to just sit back and God's going to make it work. But God's been working since the beginning of time. Think about what God did with Jesus. He sent us a carpenter who became a king. He used fishermen. To become apostles. He used tent makers to become missionaries. Everybody that you see that God used had a skill set. I told God, I don't I want to do more, be more than a preacher that just show up on Sunday mornings. Back then I wanted to wear nice suits, but I want to have a skill set. What can I do to build the kingdom? What if you became an expert expert and started taking territory? Here's what I found out in life: it's easier to critique somebody's work than to develop your own work. And if you would do what Paul said in verse 10, indeed, this is what he said, and indeed you do so toward all the brethren who are in Macedonia, but we urge you, increase more and more. If you will mind your business, study to be quiet, work with your hands, you will find yourself increasing. Here's what I want to challenge you in here today. I want you to mind your business, figure out what God is calling you to do, and I'm going to give you a secret. You can get caught up with the wrong people. Listen, hear me. Stop right where you are. It is very easy to get caught up in what's wrong with people, what's wrong with the world, what's wrong inside of you. And you can find yourself in a crowd. And watch this. Here's how you can tell who's not minding their business. The first thing they're going to tell you is all the things that are wrong around you. And hear me when I say this. I'm not telling you to stay in a toxic situation, but there is no such thing as a perfect church. There's no such thing as a perfect job. There's no such thing as a perfect anything where there's no challenges. You want to find yourself discovering, I see what's wrong, but what can be right in the situation? Because it's very easy to get distracted and become an expert in what's wrong and a novice in what's right. I want you to mind your business and master your assignment. So many people are quick to point out what's wrong, and they want to tell you what they don't like. But here is my question for you. What do you like? What can we do? What are our possibilities? And can we do it? Because there's going to come a time when you're going to be challenged to fix what you think is wrong. When it comes to work, we get help doing the work we're called to do because it's very easy to critique but the, most of the things that you see around you are a whole lot harder than what they look it takes work and skill and expert uh, craftsmanship whatever to get things done around you as a preacher uh, I had to make a decision I can mind my own business 
or I can take the time and spend my sermons and spend my time talking to you about what's wrong with that church and what's wrong with this church. And they ought to be shouting more that that's the problem. People are too emotional and I can fuss about this and that church is not sound. And that's what's wrong with this pastor over there. Or I can downplay people to make myself look good. Or I can discover what it is that God has called me to do. And finish my assignment and drown out the noise and help as many people as I can. You know the difference? When you look in the Bible, there's a guy by the name of Moses. Do you remember Moses? He talked about the promised land, but he never entered in. He never entered in the promised land because he was so focused on the chatter and trying to make people happy. And he made a mistake that cost him the promised land. He saw it, but he never entered in. And there was a guy behind him by the name of Joshua. And Joshua was not a perfect man, but he looked at the people of God, the children of Israel, and said, listen, we're going in. Things aren't perfect. You can stay here if you want to, but we're going to make a decision, and we're going to enter in. When you mind your business, you will say, things may not be perfect around me. Things may not all, every I may not be dotted, every T may not be crossed, but this is what God says do, and this is what we're going to do in the name of Jesus because we're minding our own business. Can I tell you something? It's time for us to lock in on what God has called us to do. Start networking. Start building. Start getting better at what you do. Start voicing. This is what God is saying. And let's get to work. I'll close with the main idea that I started with. Your business will never be what it's supposed to be until you start minding it. When you start minding your business, you will find yourself less anxious, frustrated with the things around you. Because you have so much work to do. All that boredom and all that idleness and all that frustration and being mad about this and that. When you know what it is that God's called you to do, you're going to put yourself in a different circle. You're going to put yourself in a place that you never imagined. Matter of fact, the frustration that many of us are having, many of us, it has nothing to do with the things going on around us. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when desire come, it's a tree of life. What many of us are experiencing is not frustration with others or things around us. It's really a longing inside of us that's not being walked out. It's your heart saying, we want to dream. We want to work. We want to try something. We want to do something. I want to challenge you. Mind your business. Go do what God called you to do. And watch how things start to fall in line in your life. I want you to make have peace inside of your stuff. The Bible says, study to be quiet. Mind your own business. Work with your hands and watch God do some incredible things in your life in the name of Jesus. If you're not saved and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to handle that business first. I want you to ask God to forgive you of your sins, cleanse you from unrighteousness, acknowledge Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and confess he's the Lord of your life. After you've gotten saved, here's my very serious challenge to you. Hear me when I say this. I want you to figure out what am I supposed to be doing? Time is too short. I'm not saying you're going to die tomorrow, but you don't have tomorrow to waste. Time is too short to be worried about who likes you and who does not like you, what you have and what you don't have. Start following and pursuing the passion God's placed in your heart, and you'll dream your way out of where you are and to the place where God wants you to be. There is work to do, and I don't know about you, but I'm going to mind my business. Lock in with us for the next few weeks as we talk about minding. 